For those of you who tuned in, last week we shared some details about the text messages that Alex Jones had exchanged with various associates and even members of his own family like his wife. In those messages, we learned that Jones is a rather sad, lonely and paranoid man who even employed spies to keep tabs on his wife who he suspected of cheating on him even though he himself was having an affair. But how did we get a hold of these text messages to begin with? Joining us now to explain just that is Mark Bankston, who served as the attorney for several families who lost their children in the Sandy Hook shooting and were later defamed by Alex Jones as crisis act actors. He helped those families win a pretty sizable, uh, sizable amount in damages, and he's been on the show before. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to come speak with us again. Absolutely, it's good to be back. So I wanted to start off by just having you walk us through how these text messages ultimately became public in the first place. Sure, sure. You know, um, you, you and Sig both know that I'm not a big fan of, of doing media, doing interviews, getting on the cable shows, all that. Um, but I wanted to come talk to y'all, um, mainly so that I could make sure that the record is clear over exactly how this happened, right? How these messages became public, because it is not something that we expected. Um, it, it's a really, it's an astonishing story to me. As m many of your viewers know, at the time of trial, uh, shortly before these messages were were accidentally and you know unintentionally produced to us, uh, and at that time we even brought it to the attention of de defense counsel. We think that these have been you know in inadvertently produced, and he was some, you know could have at that point taken action to protect them and did not, and that of course is how they ended up being used at trial. But at the conclusion of the trial, the, the judge in that case gave the, the, the defense the opportunity to do mark all of those text messages confidential or any ones that they thought would be private and needed to be sealed. And then at some point in the later that could be ruled on by the court. Um, they didn't do that. And so when we had a motion just last week uh, that was on the subject of these text messages, we filed a copy, an entire archive of those text messages. Now with redactions, certain things were taken out, things about his children, uh, explicit images, things of his healthcare providers, things like that. Um, but we filed that and we didn't have any obligation to protect any of that when we did it. Uh, but nonetheless, I approached Mr. Jones's lawyers and I did this on three separate occasions, both over the phone and in writing to tell them that these are being filed and that if they needed to, they could go get an order from the court to seal, uh, to have them temporarily sealed until the court could sometime later ruled on what should or shouldn't be public. And we told them we didn't oppose this. We, we brought it to their attention three times. They rebuked us all three times. And so for whatever reason, uh, Mr. Jones's attorneys chose not to seek a sealing order, uh, not to have all of this looked at by the court, and it just allowed it to enter the public domain. Now we had already shared those text messages or a good portion of them anyway, with the Southern Poverty Law Center to help consult with us to help understand what the messages contained. And so they could use them for their own research internal purposes, but that was all not for publication. But when Jones's lawyers failed to take any steps to protect those documents yet again, uh, there was nothing that could be done. The, the Southern Poverty Law Center is totally free to report on those at the moment they became public record. This should have happened where it was brought before the court. And that's the way I would have liked to see it happen. Uh, but unfortunately, again, I, I, there's no accounting for the steps that Jones's lawyers take. There's no explaining what they do. And in this case, they allowed them to enter the public record, even though we warned them several times that if they don't take action, they, these will enter the media. And apparently they were fine with that. Yeah, um, Mark, I think we might have just done something unprecedented in American legal history, where you wish your opposing counsel was more competent. <laughs> Um, okay, but I mean, there- It's been a running theme in this case, Sink, that's for sure. Yeah, and so with Alex Jones picking incompetent lawyers, a shocking twist. Uh, <laughs> this has all been revealed now and we see, as uh, Alex Jones put it, the black hole that he's in. Um, but uh, there's a different kind of black hole that I'm interested in, which is the one where he's likely to bury the money. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, well, what I think a lot of us are intensely curious about is, can he effectively hide the money or not? Because you know you watch TV and they always hide the money, you know, and sometimes you see stories about exactly international bankers, etc., and they always hide the money. On the other hand, Alex Jones is deeply incompetent, uh, so I don't know, maybe they'll accidentally send that to you as well. <laughs> but uh, how do you track down the money and make sure that you get what is owed the families? 
Well, the good thing in this case is we don't have to do it alone. Um, Jones was forced to make the decision to put himself into personal bankruptcy. Uh, as a result, there's now a bankruptcy court overseeing everything. And I'm sure your viewers know there have been plenty of stories over the past few years where pretty bad defendants have gotten into bankruptcy court and walk away scot-free. You know, we've all been following the stuff with uh, with Purdue Pharma, mm -hmm. with uh, Johnson and Johnson and the, the baby powder. And they think that they can just skip out on their bills that way. And some of them have been very effective. Uh, but as you note, Alex Jones is a very different, maybe less sophisticated defendant. Um, and now we have the help of the United States trustee and a bankruptcy court to really do a thorough examination of what his real assets are. And you know, if he's, he plays around like he did in the trial court, it's not gonna go well for him. A uh, bankruptcy court is a very dangerous per place to be for somebody who's not honest about all their assets. Um, so we're very confident in the bankruptcy process and how that works. It's, it's difficult to know right now exactly how all this is going to end. But I do know that if he makes steps to hide significant assets, uh, he's going to have a bad time in the bankruptcy court. Um, so that process is going to be going on over the next three to four months, uh, and you know the public can follow along and see all the filings, uh, and and we'll see what he does. We'll see if he's finally honest about what is actually there in the Infowars coffers. I'm curious, are there going to be any potential consequences for his lawyers and the insane incompetence they've demonstrated in this case? I mean, especially in terms of representing their client and you know protecting his best interests. Not that I'm personally Absolutely. concerned about his best interests, but I mean, he hired counsel and they, they're clearly so incompetent that they have all this, they allowed all this private information about him to, to go out into the public. Well, you know, and I, I want to be careful that I don't just go ahead and, and call them incompetent for doing that because maybe they had their reasons, hmm. right? They, they certainly knew it was an opportunity they could take. I, I brought it to their attention multiple times. And so maybe they, they had their reasons, so I don't know. But I do know that over the entire course of this case, there has been just flagrant abuse of the judicial process. And so far, that has only meant consequences for Jones. So far, that has only meant that he has to pay the plaintiff's attorney's fees. And, and as you might know, I've already collected over a million dollars in attorney's fees from Jones for the things that him and his lawyers have done in this case. But recently, you're right that that has turned to the attorneys. We had filed two different motions for sanctions against two different of his attorneys. And Dino Renal, who represented him at trial, and Eric Taub, one of his corporate attorneys. Right now, the court has already granted sanctions against Andino Renal and awarded us all of our fees for the bankruptcy court that we were forced to go to in April. Then later this month on February 22nd, your viewers can tune in live if they go to the YouTube page for the 459th District Court. And they'll be able to see a hearing on Jones's corporate lawyers where we are alleging that they dishonestly misled the court about Jones's corporate organization. And we're gonna seek fees from them as well. So at this point, you know, so many lawyers have bounced in and out. He's had over a dozen different lawyers in the Texas litigation. And each one of them is learning. It was a bad idea to tie yourself to somebody like Alex Jones for money. And some of these attorneys finally might pay some consequences for these actions. So we, we already have one award against one of his attorneys. We're hoping to make that another award against another one of his attorneys to hopefully send a message to the attorneys who aided this. Because not all of this was Mr. Jones's fault. The, the, this, attorney, this lawsuit has been unprecedented in terms of the, the shenanigans that have gone on in it. And not all of that you can lay at Mr. Jones's doorstep. Some of that goes to his lawyers. And, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do something about that. And I just want to fill the audience in on one of his other lawyers, Norman Pattis, uh, who <laughs> represents him in Connecticut, I believe. He was suspended earlier this year for sharing sensitive records about the Sandy Hook families, uh, you know, with other lawyers who are not at all associated with the case. Uh, that included some confidential medical records of the family members of the Sandy Hook victims, uh, and so his. License has been suspended by a judge for six months as a result of that. So, this isn't a question about one attorney or another attorney. This, I mean, it seems like this is a trend in terms of the counsel representing Alex Jones in these in these suits. Jake, did you want to jump in? Yeah. So I wanted to ask back to bankruptcy court because you said it's a dangerous place to lie. And look, the reason we're seeing the lawyers and Alex Jones in trouble is because. It's one lie after another after another, and lawyers are not allowed to lie. Uh, I know it sounds funny, but to the layman, but in court, you're definitely not supposed to lie, and that could have some consequences for your career, etc., with the bar. And so that's why it's dangerous to take on a client like Alex Jones or Donald Trump, who insist 
that their counsel lie on their behalf. And Donald Trump's lawyers are having the same issues. But back to bankruptcy court. Um, why is it dangerous? Is it, does the, does, because if you're trying to hide your money, Mark, I would imagine that you would, especially guys like that who don't seem to have any moral bounds, would just keep lying and lying and hiding and hiding and hiding until they could find every uh, crumb from it, right? Um, is there any right. criminal consequences or what happens if they catch you in these lies since your whole point is to hide as much as you can anyway? Right, right. And I mean, the, the real the real answer there is the game has changed. Is that when we were down in the state court litigation and in, in the underlying lawsuit, Jones did disobey the court's orders as far as turning over his information about assets. He has already obstructed that way. And there he had to pay a civil penalty. He had to pay attorney's fees for all the time he wasted. But now that we've gone to bankruptcy court, if you fail to disclose assets, if in your filings to the bankruptcy court you have made false statements or mislead the court about what your assets is, that is a criminal offense. And criminal criminal consequences can get involved in a bankruptcy court. It is not a place to play around with. The other problem that Jones obviously faces is when you have 12 lawyers in the underlying litigation and more lawyers in the bankruptcy litigation, if you do want to hide things, if you do want to make misleading statements, it gets hard to keep the story straight between everybody. It's very easy for one person like Jones to lie. It's very difficult for 15 people to do it. Mm. And so that's a dangerous thing for them to do. I actually now in this process, we have seen new lawyers come aboard who are longtime bankruptcy professionals who are in front of that court a lot. And I tend to think most of those new lawyers who have been brought into this are not going to risk their reputation and careers in front of that bankruptcy judge. Um, again, though, everything in this case has been unpredictable. Uh, if there really is some malfeasance going on, if there is some hiding of assets, we are going to be aggressive about it. We are going to track that down and we will make people pay consequences for that. Uh, I, I, I can tell you that not just myself, but the attorneys for the other families up in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a united front on this, and we are definitely going to make sure that we are not going to allow Mr. Jones to just slip out of this without consequence. Love uh, it. This, this bankruptcy court is a new game for him. Mark, thank you so much for the work you do, and thank you for being so generous with your time. Uh, I hope you come back soon to fill us in with any updates that you might learn about the you know bankruptcy proceedings and all of that. Uh, again, thank you uh, for, for coming on. Absolutely, I hope to be returning with some really good and positive news soon. Us too. Right. Yep, great. And now that I know uh, bankruptcy uh, court can lead to criminal consequences, that's already pretty good news. The chance of uh, Alex Jones not lying during those proceedings is near zero. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.